Hello and welcome to this informational presentation on the development and QC of the Healthy Control Human IPSC line SCTI-003A. My name is Andrew Gaffney, Director of Stem Cell Manufacturing and Commercialization at Stem Cell Technologies. And over the next few minutes, I'll be walking through some key points about our highly characterized IPSC line. Now, it was essential that our commercial IPSC quality assessments and release criteria were developed based on recommendations from a number of internationally recognized groups. And that includes ISCBI's Banking Consensus publication in 2009, Gates paper on clinical grade IPSCs in 2018, and the guidelines rolled out by the ISSCR Standards Initiative in 2023 for the best practices and quality standards for human stem cell use in research. We took on board all recommendations from ISSCR and implemented these guidelines fully into our IPSC development processes. And here they are. This is exactly how we develop and test our IPSC lines at Stem Cell Technologies. All of the QC procedures that we use in production are listed in this table. We're very open about how we do this. And as you can see, a number of cell banks are generated for each line, including a master, working, and commercial cell bank. These banks are approximately three passages apart from each other, and QC tests are performed at varying stages of the development process. Now, as a side to QC, we also recognize that a lack of guidelines for naming PSC lines has led to some confusion in the field. So we decided to use the standardized nomenclature established by HPSC Reg that unambiguously identifies a registered cell line. As you can see in the center of the screen, our healthy control IPSC line has been named SCTI-003A. If you scan the QR code on the left, you'll see that this takes you to the official page on the HPSC Reg website for the 3A line. And that contains all information relating to donor information, ethics, derivation, among other things. You can also download a copy of our extensive 25 page certificate of analysis from there as well. We've provided heightened evidence that the 3A line is pluripotent and has been donor consented with the highest of ethical standards. Because of this, HPSC Reg officially certified the 3A line, showing that a minimal set of ethical and scientific standards have been met. This certificate is essential for certain funding agencies, including any PSC research funded by the European Union. Now, it's important to note that donor tissue is ethically sourced at stem cell and is collected using Institutional Review Board or IRB protocols. In the case of 3A, this was derived from PBMCs from a 48 year old female who was clinically undiagnosed at donation. Donor characteristics are separated out by those that are self declared, such as race and ethnicity, and those that are calculated, like height, weight, and blood type. All of our QC can be broken down into a number of different parts, a selection of which can be seen on the screen now. This includes viability and recovery assays, detection of adventitious agents, identity testing, genomic stability and integrity, whole exome and genome sequencing, assessing the undifferentiated state by marker expression, and assessing pluripotency by trilineage differentiation. Now in 2017, Florian Merkel and colleagues reported that whole exome sequencing of hundreds of PSC lines identified numerous mutations in P53. Separately to this, Shinya Yamanaka presented findings of a point mutation in the tumor suppressor gene b -core that also went on to be further described by a group at the Sanger Institute. These findings drew attention to the acquisition of mutations in tumor suppressor genes in PSCs, so this was also a key focus for our analysis. We performed whole exome sequencing of the 3A line, which allowed for the identification of genomic SNPs, and the resulting profile of genetic variants was compared against ClinVar. The statuses of P53 and BCOR went on to be interrogated in depth. For P53, seven variants were detected, and for BCOR, there were five. However, the good news is that they were all silent. Most importantly, 
no variants were identified that were previously reported by Merkel, Yamanaka, and the Sanger Institute, and no pathogenic or likely pathogenic variants were identified by ClinVar. I should note that despite focusing largely on QC in this presentation, a large amount of the work that went into commercializing this cell line was to demonstrate its compatibility with a number of differentiation protocols, some of which can be seen on the screen now. We've successfully differentiated this line into cell types of all three embryonic germ layers, as well as 16 other cell types, including neurons, cardiomyocytes, and microglia, and organoids, including intestinal, cerebral, and brain region-specific organoids, and that was all performed using our stem diff kits. Finally, we also tested the 3A's ability to scale up in PBS bioreactors. Cells were expanded in TESA AOF 3D, an animal origin-free bioreactor medium. The linear log cumulative fold expansion plot showed consistent expansion with no lag phase during transition into 3D, and we saw an average daily fold expansion of 1.5. In general, we find that a total of 1 billion viable cells is reached after about five passages. And with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for listening. SCTI 003A is available for use in your laboratory now. And if you'd like to explore further data and information about the line, feel free to use your phone camera to scan the QR code on your screen now, or visit the website directly at stemcell.com forward slash SCTI 003-A. You can also contact us with any questions or feedback at ipscrequests at stemcell.com. Thank you very much.